Igor, bring the receiver up to maximum voltage. Yes, master. Stabilize the wavelength to 90 hertz. Yes, master. Start the espresso machine. Yes, master. Pop on ESPN. Yes, master. And now, now I shall spit in the face of God. I shall become God, for I, a mere mortal, shall create life. It's working, master. Yes, rise, rise, my creature, for the time of gods is past. And now, it's Crowley time. Hello, and welcome to Crowley Time with me, Tom Crowley. With me, Tom Crowley. But it's me, Tom Crowley, not in my usual location this time. I'm taking a little trip on a bus. One of those little old-fashioned tour buses like you see in films where they go to the seaside. I've got a choice seat by the window, but uh, it must be night time. Uh, I can't see anything outside. It's, It's all pitch dark. I wonder where we are. I'll ask the conductor. Hello? Excuse me? Conductor? Can you tell me where we are? He's not answering. He's just standing at the front of the bus, staring straight ahead. Bit rude. Oi! The thing is, listeners, I don't remember getting on this bus. I just suddenly woke up and here I was. Just me and a few others. Heading, well, somewhere, on this bus. Who else have we got here? Uh, Looks like a white-haired old lady down the front. A young guy in a leather jacket halfway down. Strange, it's hard to make them out. Almost like they're in shadow. Even though the whole bus is brightly lit. There's a smartly dressed businessman sitting across the aisle from me, but I can't quite make out his face. It's hard to explain. I I can see him, but if someone asked me to describe him, I I wouldn't know what to say. Hold on, I'll say hello. Hello, mate? Excuse me? Yes, can I help you? I'm me, Tom Crowley. Nice to meet you. Rollo Nearsbrook, charmed. I just wondered if you knew where this bus is going, (laughs) that's all. No, I don't, as a matter of fact. All of a sudden, I was just here. Well, that's what happened to me, too. Are you sure you can't remember anything else? No, no. Well, last thing I remember, I was with my secretary. We've been having this absolutely smashing affair, you see. Bit of a risk, as her boyfriend is a renowned occultist and satanic sorcerer, but I don't expect he'd ever find out. And she's got a very nice bottom. Yes. Anyway, so she and I were... Well, I've got quite the story to tell, actually. I'll start at the beginning. One day... I was in the office, merely... Oh, hang on. Are we dead? Pardon? Are we dead and this bus is hell? Is that it? Is that what this is? We're dead and the bus is hell and we all tell a story and it turns out at the end that it's the story of how we died and it turns out we're all dead and the bus is hell and that's what this whole thing's about, isn't it? Maybe you'll feel better when you've heard my story. Oh, shut up, Rollo, you perv. Oh. Oi, conductor! Conductor! Oi, prick! Hey, that's not nice. Oh, bugger. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hollow-eyed ghoul. Yeah, thought so. Yeah, that's it, isn't it? We're all dead and this is hell. That's what this is, isn't it? I uh, don't know what you mean. Please remain seated while the bus is in motion. Stick it up your ass. Well, really. The driver's a skeleton in a shroud as well, I suppose. N- no, he's a lovely, portly bus driver called Steve with a big moustache. And- hey, slaphead. How dare you? Yep, there he is. Skeleton in a shroud. We're all dead, aren't we? That's what this is. I, uh, no distracting the driver. Why? Right, pull over. Oh. oh, come on. Play along. No, I'm not having this. I've got stuff to do. Pull over. Oh. Unbelievable. There. But I just want you to know, you've really spoiled this for us. Tough tits. See you in 40 years. You'll be lucky. <laughs> <laughs> 
three, uh, four. Uh, Come on, don't die on me. Get off me, will you? For goodness sake, I'm fine. Oh, my God, you're alive. The speed that thing hits you. It, oh, right, I see. Little old-fashioned tour bus hits me. I go down. Ironic afterlife in hell on a bus. Got it. Wait a minute, you've had a serious accident. You need medical attention. I don't have time. I've got to go back to my studio and record my sketch comedy podcast. Your what? It's, uh, it's, it's like a radio sketch comedy show, but it's put out as a podcast. Oh, a podcast, I see. Yeah, exactly. What sort of stuff do you chat about? Oh, for the love of... Uh, just give me one of those and I'll be fine. Are you sure? Yeah, chop, chop, come on. Okay, well, uh, clear. <laughs> right, thank you. I really think you I should... said thank you, my good man. Bloody hell, some people. Well, now that I'm back where I belong, listeners, we can get on with the show. It's a corker with a fabulous guest, and I'm delighted to be resuming normal Crowley time service after the last couple of months of Faces of Virtue. And now the usual programming is back on, I've got to get back to Crowley Towers. Flipping heck, I should have expected these creepy interruptions, given that it's the sinister season. What do you do, listeners? Now that the evenings are drawing in and the ghosts and ghouls are coming out to play, where do you get your chills? It's been a goddamn asshole of a summer here at Camp Killamuck, but at least we know now that the killer is well and truly... Pretty scary film, wouldn't you say? Hmm. The effects were good, and I jumped a fair few times. Quite scary, wasn't it? Hmm. Bogless, didn't you think it was scary? Hmm, yes, I suppose it was rather scary. Yeah, I thought so. But the really scary thing... Yeah? I mean, the really scary thing... Yeah? ...is how doomed the world is. Oh, yeah? With climate change and the rise of the far right and automation erasing human labour and the unchecked exploitation of global capitalism. Oh, yes, I'd say the real world is a darn sight more scary than a film about a hatchet-wielding maniac running around a campsite. Hmm. Yeah, I suppose. In fact, it makes you wonder why we even bother, doesn't it, Nicole? Doesn't it make you think, oh, maybe we shouldn't even get out of bed in the morning? Perhaps, Bogliss. Doesn't it make you think, oh, let's all just give up because humans are awful and the world's just going to burn to a crisp anyway, Nicole? Not exactly, Bogliss. Doesn't it make you think, maybe it would be better if we all just died, Nicole? Isn't that the actual scary thing, that it'd be better if we all just died, Nicole? Well, I'm not sure about that, Bogless. I mean, isn't it a terrible tragedy to think of all those poor young people in poverty-stricken and war-torn countries dying without really getting a fair chance at life? Uh, Well, uh, yes. And isn't it just as sad if someone gets ill and dies before their time anyway, wherever they are? Even in peaceful, affluent Western countries. Uh, uh, uh... So, instead of saying everything's awful and we should just die, wouldn't it be better to be grateful that we've got our lives and our health and, who knows, maybe even do something to help with the time we have on the planet? Um, uh, uh, yes, Nicole, but it's the systems, the systems of power that keep us on our unavoidable downward trajectory. Yeah, that's true. Yes. So... Maybe you could do something to try to affect those systems? Like some sort of awareness spreading campaign or volunteering for a political organisation? Um, well... I'm always seeing leaflets for local environmental causes and food bank drives. You could look up who's doing that and offer your services. Um, um, well, Nicole, uh, that's all well and good, but uh, what hope do those efforts have of affecting the root causes of those social ills, hmm? That's a good point, Bogless. Yes, thank you. It seems like we're utterly powerless to affect the huge systemic problems spreading misery across the planet. Yes, unfortunately so. So... Maybe you could do something to help the community immediately around you. Um... Maybe you could volunteer to talk to lonely older people. Or mentor troubled young children. Or even just go out with a rubbish bag and pick up all the litter and bits of broken glass that seem to be all over the streets around here all the time. Oh? Um... Or maybe... You could start a letter-writing push to save the local youth club. Uh, Or look up a local message board that lists volunteering opportunities. mm. Or if it doesn't exist, you could set one up so other people could use it. Or maybe you 
could even just sign up as a member of the local library mm. to show that it's important and people use it. Not even take a book out, mm. just sign up. Mm. Maybe doing one of these things, even just one, once, is worth more than the entire life you've spent droning on at everybody you know with your nihilistic claptrap that achieves nothing, mm. less than nothing, in fact as it serves only to drain the willpower from yourself and everyone around you, mm. so they'll never do anything with their lives either. Mm. And isn't that the really scary thing? Mm. That despite all your whining and acting superior, mm. pointing out everything that's wrong with the world, mm. you've managed to have a net negative impact on the planet yourself. Mm. Isn't that scarier than a film about a hatchet-wielding maniac running around a campsite? Uh, Nicole, that's enough! I get the point all right i am feeling really really under attack right now i've got feelings too you know i'm sorry bogless i didn't mean to hurt you well you did it's not like i never do anything you know i was about to do something right now in fact and what was that smoke the rest of this massive pile of weed and get really depressed all right whatever you like thank you god uh, oh oh Maybe you could get an ashtray. Oh, for goodness sake, Nicole, who am I? Greta Thunberg? I think we all know a bogless or two. And if not, you know what they say. If you don't have a bogless among your group of friends, well, that's, that's very fortunate. Cripes alive, where am I now? It's just fields, as far as the eye can see. I'm sure I took the right turn off the motorway. I'll ask someone for directions. Uh, hello, excuse me. I'm a lemon. Yes, yes, I know. Look, where am I? Put me in your drink. Sorry? Look, I'm lost and I don't know which way I should go. Lemon. <laughs> <sighs> Fat lot of use that lemon was. I'm looking at maps on my phone, but it can't seem to get the data. I've got a bit of signal, though. I'll try calling Crowley Towers. Hello, this is Crowley Time with Oh, Tom sod Crowley it. Well, I might as well check the messages while I'm here. Oh, same old rubbish. There has to be someone else around here I can ask for directions. Oh well, while I'm looking, listeners, here's a preview of coming attractions. This Halloween, prepare to face a new enemy. Hello, I'm wily and intuitive young academic, Professor Blimey Quince. I'm looking for a book, Meditations on the Causality of Fate by Professor Arnold F. Stinkhammer. Certainly, let me see. Um, I'm sorry, but that book's already been taken out. Really? By whom? Well, gosh, this is funny, but um, by someone else also called Blimey Quince. What? An enemy from the shadows. An enemy that you can't see coming. An enemy that defies explanation. Come on, come on. Yes? Blimey Quince. Y yes, that's me. I'm... This is so strange. But I'm also Blimey Quince. Oh, gosh. And I was also hoping to take out Meditations on the Causality of Fate by Professor Arnold F. Stinkhammer. Well, I never... You were? Yes, how can that be? What do you mean? How can it be that both of us can have the same name and have been trying to find the exact same book in the same library at around the same time? Well, I don't know. It's quite strange, but I suppose it's just a coincidence. What did you say? One woman's quest to explain the inexplicable, to conquer the unconquerable, to inside the coincidental. Hello, madam. How can I help? I want to report a crime against logic. Well, I'm afraid that sounds a bit outside our jurisdiction. Don't you understand? Things are happening outside our control. Patterns are being contrived for God knows what reason. Events are being coordinated by some outside force that we can hardly begin to understand. Whoa, 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 whoa. Calm down now. Just what are these forces you're talking about? Apparently, they're called... Coincidences. Coincidences? You've come in here to report the very idea of multiple things happening with uncanny synchronicity for no apparent reason? Yes. What's so amusing about that? Well, it's just that you're the second one today. No! Coincidental. A new thriller from the director of Deja Vu, the writer of Je Ne Sais Quoi, and the executive producer of Medea Discovers a Sense of Existential Dread. Where are you? You god 
damn coincidences. I'll find you, wherever you are. You can't hide. I'm gonna get you. Wait, is that you? The other blimey quince? Yes, that's me. Oh, it's you. What are you doing here? I'm waging a bloody campaign against the concept of coincidences. Never. Me too. Ah! Coincidental. Coming soon to Plus Max Go Extreme Flavor. And to theaters in China and Saudi Arabia in a special edited version where it looks like the woman isn't the main character. Coincidental. Don't leave it to chance. Or do. Wow, that looks fantastic. I'll have to find a screening near me. Once I've worked out where I am and therefore what is near me. I keep walking, but there's nothing here. Just more and more horizon. Just amber fields of corn as far as the eye can see. I'm going to take a breather. See if anyone's called the studio. I am the evil witch who lives down the well. And I have a missive to whisper in your ear. Stop throwing your burger wrappers down here! It stinks! Yes, take notice, listeners. Littering is not acceptable behaviour, especially when it irritates a well witch who might crawl into your bed in the night and eat your face off or whatever. Oh, what a horrible... Wait. Over there! Hey! Hello? Hey! There's someone over there, listeners. A dungarees, baseball cap, slouched posture of a man who has known the cruel boot of toil on his neck. Must be a farmer. Hey, 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 excuse me. How do, young fellow? Hello. Hi. You look lost. Oh, and all this nothing? I am, yes. Can you tell me how to get off this farm? Well, now, many's the man who finds himself lost in these fields, with no notion of which way he's coming or going. What I says to him is, if you can stop looking outward and turn your gaze within, and reckon with what sort of a man you truly are, and make peace with all the things you've done in life, then maybe you'll find that you've known the route all along. So, is there like a bus, or...? You see, many's the man who quiets his voice of conscience and pushes on ahead without thinking of those around him. When that man comes face to face with the hereafter... He finds himself without answer or defence. Oh, wait a second. If I lift up that baseball cap... Oh, here, get off! Yep, skeleton man. I'm still dead, aren't I? I'm dead and this is hell. Uh, uh, who can look into the face of infinity and say true that he never... Right, I get it. This is the vast expanse of infinity symbolising the unknowable nature of the human soul. And in the end, the only escape is to admit all your sins and then you're in hell. Right, I get it. No, thank you. You what? I'm off. Bye-bye. I'm too busy for this. You can't just decide to bail on the afterlife. Watch me. (laughs) Come on, don't die on me. (laughs) Yes, yes, all right, get off. Oh, you're alive. The speed that tractor hit you. Yes, yes, blah, blah, hit by farming equipment, ironic arable afterlife, I get it. What? I think you've got brain damage. Yeah, well, get in line. What? What an absolute pain in the tockers. I've got a show to put out, you know. But this looks more like it. I can't see any symbolic landscapes or monsters or anything, just just the normal high street. So if KFC's there and the Vapes of Wrath is over the road, then that means Crowley Towers is just down the street. I must have just left the studio when that tractor hit me. I'm almost home! Yeah! Oh, ah! Oh, tractors do hurt, don't they? I should have got another zap off that paramedic. Well, never mind. Bear with me, listeners, and in no time I'll be back on my throne. Then when i finished and washed my hands, I'll be back to work. <clears throat> my friends, colleagues, fellow human beings... I don't think that just 12 months ago, we could have imagined where we are today, gazing into the dawn of a new era of hope, of peace, of equality. The perfection of nuclear fusion technology has handed near infinite power to all the peoples of the world. It has brought down dictators, cruel regimes and unjust monopolies and united the planet in the pursuit of a new age of plenty. And so, it will come as no surprise to any of you that this year's Nobel Prize goes to the man who gave us that breakthrough and saved the world. Friends, join me in thanking 
Bogless. Bogless. Thank you. You're welcome, Professor. But some of the thanks belongs to my former flatmate, Nicole. Once upon a time, she made it clear that I had a choice. I could either do something, anything, to help this world of ours, or smoke loads of weed all night. And you decided to help. No, I smoked that whole pile of weed, and at about 4am I thought, what if the secret ingredient to nuclear fusion is turmeric? Which, of course, turned out to be right. I see. So, what's the moral of the story there exactly? Who cares? Let's all go for a ride in our carbon-neutral flying cars. Good idea. Race you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm get there first. <laughs> oh, what a relief. Back in Crowley Towers. Even that, that sort of broccoli smell is a comfort to me now. <sighs> oh, and I'm just in time for the letters. Mm. Oh, and there's old Savaloy grabbing 40 winks while I was out. Look at him there, gentle as a baby, or a very weak adult. Savaloy! Savaloy! Uh, oh, oh, oh no! Am I dead? Am I dead and this is hell? No, Savaloy, you've just got take a break draped over your face. Ah, oh, phew! Oh, what a relief! Oh, hello, sir. Caught you looking a bit worse for wear, if you don't mind me saying. Well, it's no surprise. I've been hit by a bus and a tractor today. No, wait. I think it was just the tractor. Or just the bus. Oh, it doesn't matter. Look, let's just get on with it. Are you bleeding? Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. The point is, we're having the conversation. Maybe you should sit down. No, no. Later, later. Let's let's do the letters. Uh, all right, sir. Oh, we've had a few in. Here's one from Kaya. Hello, Mr... It's all right. I can do it. I can uh, do it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Sir Tom Crowley. I've just discovered the show and have been listening to it exclusively and obsessively over the last couple of weeks. It's the only podcast that has made me actually laugh out loud and concern everyone around me who sees me laughing at nothing. My family thinks I'm completely unhinged, which I am, and it's all thanks to you. Curse you, Mr. Crowley. You can't see, but I'm dramatically shaking my fist in anger at this wonderfully written and utterly hilarious podcast that has estranged me from those I love. Please tell Mike Shinbone from Shinbone Entrepreneurials that I absolutely adore him. Oh, that's lovely. Just one second. Hello? Hello, Mike. Oh, Tom, what do you want? I'm busy. Kaya loves you. whoop de doo goodbye. Well, there you go, Kaya. Your wish is my cucumber, but why do my hands keep getting smaller? Uh, sir... Not now, Salamander. Let's have another letter. <laughs> uh, right. Ah, this one's from our old friend Sefi Poulter. <laughs> Dear Tom, some time ago now, I thought I could get away with surreptitiously listening to a Crowley Time episode while working at my office job. Unfortunately, one particular sketch caused me to make an undignified wheezing noise at my desk, which frightened the office dog and, I fear, did significant damage to my hitherto impeccable professional image. Seriously, up until then, all my colleagues basically thought I was a god, probably. Ever since then, I have been on a single-minded quest for revenge. I attended your recent live performance of Crowley Time with a Bart Simpson slingshot and a punnet of rotting nectarines concealed about my person. My plan was foolproof. However, when I saw the little faces of you and your guest stars on that stage, I found I didn't have it in my heart to pelt you with decomposing fruit. So I had to settle for stealing your pen. I still have it. Kind regards, Sefi. Ah, oh dear. There seems to be a theme emerging. It seems that this show makes people laugh so much that they end up causing themselves trouble. Maybe I should make the show less funny, eh, sad boy? It might be dangerous being as funny as... All right, mate, don't overdo it. No, quite right. Well, Seffy, I hope the pen is some recompense. And thanks to you and to everyone who came out to see the first ever Crowley Time live show at London Podcast Festival last month. It was wonderful to see you there and to meet some of you afterwards, and and in particular it was nice to see such a big crowd. So much so that I'll definitely be staging that show, The Deponi Contingency, again sometime soon. I'm even hoping to, whisper it, take the show outside London. So if you're elsewhere in the United Kingdom and you were frustrated you couldn't make it all the way down to the old smokestack, you might get a chance to see it sometime. I'm afraid it might be a while before the Broadway transfer, though. Right, one more, Sabalon. Are you sure, sir? I mean, you are lying on the floor. What? No, I'm... Oh, so I am. Well, never mind. 
is very comfortable down here, you know. Yes, sir. Come on, Samantha. One more letter and we'll call it a day. All right, all right, but don't come crying at me if all that blood stains the carpet. Right, let's see. Uh, from Mike in Ottawa, in Ontario, in Canada, in the world. Hello, Tom Crowley. I've just finished listening to Faces of Virtue 10, having started with your first episode and listened continuously over the past two weeks. No breaks to listen to other podcasts or even music. I've listened while running, paddling on the river, and building a deck in my backyard. Here is a picture of my thumb that I smashed with a hammer. Oh, God, another one. Sandra, look at his thumb. Blimey. Right off. Well, it looks like the show really is dangerously funny. Three tales of major inconvenience or injury as a result of listening to it. That's either very good advertising or very bad. If you'd like to see the damage that Crowley Time did to Mike's thumb, I'll post it on social media with the hashtag Crowley Time Hammered Thumb. As a warning that no matter how much you love this show, you must always be sure to listen responsibly. But since you were so productive up until your hammer incident, Mike, and since the spirit of Crowley Time is now imbued in your backyard deck, I'm awarding you Letter of the Episode! And as Letter of the Episode! For the first time this episode, you get a free Crowley Time Maximum Elite t-shirt! Wow! And a free digital download of this show's soundtrack album. And maybe it's just the blood loss talking, but from now on, I think every letter featured in the show will get a free digital soundtrack download as well. So, Kaya and Sefi, you get one too. Those fabulous prizes will be winging their way to you shortly, and if you, listener, would like some free goodies as well, why not write in to CrowleyTimePodcast at gmail.com. That's CrowleyTimePodcast at gmail.com, master. And you could be... Letter of the episode! Ooh, Sam Valoya, I might just shut my eyes for a moment. I'm, I'm feeling very tired. I wouldn't recommend that, sir. For one thing, you're supposed to be hosting a show right now. Oh, just stick the telly on. Well, all right, sir, if you think that's best. And stop your face spinning round and round. It's very rude. And after that, at 11.30, Lionel Bockmeister's Nice to Eat You will round off our all-cannibal marathon next Tuesday. (laughs) But now on Dead Old Horror TV, it's time to take your seat in the Sinister Cinema for another late-night chilluloid thrill in Shite Yourself Classics with your host, Skelenora Profanicata. All right, Skerstronauts, how's it going? You know, once when I was wee, my da was driving us back for our holidays when he hit a deer with a car. Poor thing wasn't dead either. My da had to back o'er it three or four times, but it still wouldn't throw in the towel. So he had to get out and finish it off with a big novelty stick of rock we got at the beach. Had to bash it so hard, I'll bet you that poor animal's ghost has Sandwood Bay printed across its forehead. Why am I sharing this traumatic experience with you? Because I reckon that harrow in 20 minutes was about as funny as anything you're going to see in the shite we've got lined up for you the night. It's that creepy old bastard Spanks McCandle in Pardon Me, I'm an Old Count, see what they did there, for 1973. Also starring Chuntley Buffingham and Mona Lindsay, whoever they are. I'm away for a pint, see you at the adverts. Goodness, what a nightmare, dragging all my cases through miles of wild forest. Thanks for taking them. You're welcome, darling. When I asked you to give me a good workout and make me sweat until I beg for mercy tonight, this isn't what I had in mind. Oh, Mikkel, that you can joke at a time like this. And we, thrown from our carriage, abandoned on this remote patch of the forests of Spanksylvania, and forced to seek refuge in this sinister old castle. This is the least amusing wedding night I've ever had. And the only one, right? Mikkel? Right? Mikkel? Mikkel? Right? Mikkel? Mikkel? Gosh, look at that painting. Now, uh, there's a face only a mother could love. Oh, oh, yes. It's so lifelike. 
Almost as if it's moving. That's enough to put the willies up anyone. Chance would be a fine thing. Now you're nicking my lines. Ah, yeah. It is moving. Ah, 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 ah. Fear not, my pretty. I was merely standing very still here in front of this painting of me. Oh, why? Welcome to my home, young folk. I am Count Vigo Carpathion Nosferatu Graham von Spankula the 16th, but you may call me Spanx. Greetings, Spanx. No, actually, I don't like that. Call me Count Spankula. No Spanx? Well, maybe later if you play your cards right. Now, hold on a second. Certainly. I don't think he meant to me, Count. Oops, my mistake. No, you see, Carlotta here is my wife. We were just married today. And I can still hardly believe it. No more Carlotta Mercedes. Now I'm Mrs. Carlotta Oldbangers. Carlotta Oldbangers? How fortuitous. I've got a clapped out old rover I'm desperate to palm off on someone. I bet you have. Count Spankula, what my husband is trying to say is that... We're lost and alone here in this unfamiliar land, and we don't have anywhere to stay. Please, may we rest here? It's our wedding night, and we're desperate. I'm particularly desperate. Come on, mate, it's been weeks. What was that? No, no, it's impossible. I'm sorry. You'll have to continue to the village on foot. It's only 18 miles and 12 sinister local legends away. We'll never make it there. We'll freeze. Or else the wolves will readily make a meal of us. Or else we'll freeze and then be eaten by the wolves. A frozen ready meal. All right, you've twisted me arm. You may stay. But I could never allow a couple to sleep together who weren't married. We were just married today. We told you. Well, let me finish. Who weren't married for at least a week. It's an old Spanxylvanian superstition. Bad luck, you know. I'll say. But you may both stay if you take separate bedchambers. It will be torture to be apart from you, Mikel. But I suppose we have no choice but to delay our wedding night by one more day. How many miles did you say it was? Then it's settled. Mikel, you can have the grand suite. Oh, lovely. When you're ready for bed, just fold it down out of the wall. Don't use the ensuite bog because it don't flush. Wonderful. My apologies to both of you, but we must respect the old ways. And while I cannot permit you the wedding night you had imagined, sir, I can at least offer you a comfortable night's sleep. And as for your new bride, fear not, for I most certainly intend to give her one. That's what concerns me. Your generosity is too much, Count. But tell me, which room will be mine? Carlotta, my dear, you shall have the maiden quarters. It comes with luxury bedding that leaves very little to be desired, and a nightgown which leaves very little to the imagination. I see. Thank you, Count. It also has a nice big window. Oh, 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 me poor knackered old wings. I think I've got a touch of masturbator's elbow. I mean, from the flying, of course. Uh, now, big window. Uh, there we are. I'm coming, Carlotta, my sweet. Uh, 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 uh. Hello. Who could that have been? All the way up here. Uh, Hello, my dear. Nice night. Why, Count, what on earth are you doing, dangling from this high window by only your fingertips? I was, uh, fixing a tile on the roof and I uh, slipped. A tile on the roof? At this hour? Oh, it's not that unusual for a man to hit the tiles on a Saturday night, is it? I suppose not. Could you uh, help me up? It's an awfully long way down. Oh, yes. Uh, 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 Worry uh, not, Count. Uh, I won't let you go down on me. There's a pity. <sighs> uh, oh, oh, thanks, my dear. I was almost two-dimensional there. I think we both knew that ship has sailed. Yes, perhaps you're right. I see you've made use of the complimentary nightgown. Cool, blimey, look at those hooters. Ah, oh, yes. I've never stayed anywhere with stuffed owls in the bedrooms, but I must admit it does lend a rustic air. Yes, uh, that's what I hoped. God blimey, look at those knockers! Yes, a bit strange having them on the inside of the doors, 
But I suppose they must serve some purpose. Uh, yes, uh, a bit eccentric, I admit. <laughs> Corp, me! look at those human breasts! It's getting harder to tastefully ignore your lecherous comments, Count. Oh, uh, my apologies, young lady. <laughs> that's not the only thing that's getting harder. What is going on in here? What business do you have penetrating my wife's maiden quarters in the night, you filthy old Count? Sleep! What on earth are you talking... <laughs> Mikael, what have you done to him? I have used my undead magic to send his feeble mind into a state of slumber. I've also made sure he has really stressful and horrid dreams about toilets with no doors on the cubicles. <laughs> <gasps> undead magic? You mean you're... A mason? Yes. And I'm also a vampire. But there's no such thing as vampires. They said the same thing about lesbians, and believe me, they were wrong there too. Good lord. You're a lesbian as well? No, no, I just meant... Oh, never mind. To business. First, I shall throw your pathetic husband here to my pet wolves. Then, I shall be back to claim you as my undead bride. Two weddings in one day? Oh god, the stress... And I already sent the caterers home. Don't worry. For a vampire wedding, you don't need a full buffet. We'll just have a quick bite. No, no, I won't have this. You're not taking my husband. Eh? Uh. What are you talking about? Shut up and surrender to my evil will. Two can play your sick game. That is, if you're up for a quickie. <gasps> what? You know, a double header. Change ends at half time. Get a feel for the ball. N no. What are you doing? Or perhaps a game of chess. You know, get all the little men out and have them take each other roughly over the kitchen table. Uh, stop it. That's my thing. I do the double intendies. But you know what? I prefer Monopoly. It's bigger and harder, and it's not over nearly so quickly. No! And it wouldn't be the first time I got mixed up with a banker, a sports car, a rubber duck, and a little dog. <laughs> oh, she's out smutting me! It burns! Oh, you in this time, old bangers is. But I'll be back to finish you off. Well, it's only polite. <laughs> Wake up! Wake up, my love. Uh, oh, Carlotta, uh, what happened to the Count? He's gone, at least for a little while. Oh, yes, but how long? From the hang of his pyjamas, I'd say about four inches. And that's quite enough of that. Gosh, I feel so much better. I feel restored somehow. Appropriately enough, it's almost as if all that blood was magically sucked back up into my body. <laughs> You know what it is, it's probably just the joy of seeing our old chum Chuntley crop up in things. You're too kind, Tom. Oh, Chuntley, what are you doing there? I live here. Well, you're not supposed to. You're funny, that, isn't it? Yeah, all right. Well, since you are here, I think there's one question we'd all like to ask you. Who's that? Well, me and whoever's listening. Oh, both of you. Yes, all right. I think the question we'd really like to ask is, how does a seasoned actor like yourself approach a major film role like that one? I'm so glad you asked, Tom. You know, when you've played so many young debonair suitors and army captains and werewolf hunters, you can start to mix them up somewhat. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Not really. No, how could you? But it's true, and because of that, you have to put extra work into your characterization to keep them distinct from one another. Interesting. And did you have some special technique for discovering all these new characters? I did, in fact. Have you heard the story about how old Davy Suchet clutched a 50 pence piece between his buttocks to play the great detective Hercule Poirot? I have, actually. Well, that's a trick he pinched off me. Really? Yes. You see, while we were filming Pardon Me, I'm an Old Count, he was two sound stages over doing a background spiv on Constable Charlie, and I let him in on this little wheeze in the canteen one day. To conjure the role of Mikkel, I was holding a clove of garlic between my buttocks for every single take. You never. To maintain his noble bearing and tense upright posture? No. I thought, well, there's vampires around. He'll probably want a bit of garlic on him, won't he? Right. 
But and I've pulled that little number out countless times, if you'll pardon the expression. In fact, for most of my notable roles, I've had some crucial item up there clenched tight between my rock-hard bootocks, such as Chief Inspector Brinkus from Blood Bleeders, a pair of handcuffs. Coach Cheney from Ballpark Wolf Guy, a regulation baseball. Old Man in Captain America Civil War, a pair of false teeth. Ugh. And of course, every time, a haggis for Macbeth. And that one's especially tricky, because Sorry, you... can I stop you? Yes. Thank God. Sir Chantley Buffingham, go away now, please. But Tom, I can't go away. Hey? No. I said I lived here, but then so do you. Oh, no. We're going to live here for all time. Because, because I'm, I'm not Sir Chantley Buffingham. Buffingham. Oh, flip. I'm the devil. And you're dead and in hell. <laughs> oh, no, 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 Chantley, no. Why? Why? Uh, oh, uh, uh, Chantley. Chantley, why? Why? Uh, oh. Oh, I, I'm not in hell. I'm back in the studio. Too right you are. Good thing I had one of those zapper thingies installed. Oh, good. Give us another of those. All right, clear. Oh, cool. that's the biscuit, isn't it? I took the opportunity of you being passed out and gone all do lally to dress your various tractor wounds with some old letters that were lying around from before we went paperless. Oh, so I see. Final demand. If payment is not received, large men will forcibly... <laughs> well, all's well that ends well, isn't it? Yes, sir. But you know what would really bring me back to life? What's that, sir? A nice hot beef bourguignon. Come in, right? Beef bourguignon? Yes, that'd hit the spot. Well, all right, but... I mean, that'll take... Uh, all right, you're the boss. Thanks, Savaloy. You're welcome, sir. Bleeding liberty. I don't even know if we've got enough burgundy. Oh, my life. What have I done to deserve this? Well, listeners, I suppose that's about all we've got time for. Happy creepy times and such. I hope you're all stocked up on sweets and avoiding themed murderers and ghost nuns and all the rest of it. Especially my beloved Patreon supporters. Thanks to all my supporters who've signed up at patreon.com forward slash Crowley time to support this show, but especially the show's executive producers. Aileen Joins, Amanda Waterman, Andy Case, Brian Scheimick, Diggory Laycock, Dr. The Eliminator, George Cantor, Gigi Catherine, James Rayliff, James Roberts, Katrina Powers, Kim M, Louise Robb, Matt Luck Cuck Meme Michaela McNally Paul Teeman Samantha Dye and Peter Shanks and Tobias Anderson But the most vast, terrifying and unknowable thanks must go to the show's Supreme Champion Producers <laughs> The creepy, kooky, altogether ooky Laurel Carlson and Purple Strawberry if you'd like to sign up to help me make this show bigger, better, and more frequent, just go to patreon.com forward slash Crowley time and sign up at any of the paid tiers. Whatever tier you choose, you'll get access to all the bonus material ever released for this show, plus some other goodies at the costlier memberships. That's patreon.com forward slash Crowley time to put your money where your ears are. Well, it's about time to shut the old coffin lid on another episode. But before that, I must extend some extremely thankful thanks to my very special guest for this episode, Kudzanai Chihuahua. It's been really nice to be here. Thank you, Tom. It's been a delight to have you. Sorry things got so scary at some points. A uh, granola bowl, usually, with a bit of yoghurt, bananas, chopped up bananas, chopped up apples, just a dash of milk. Just a dash. Excellent. Kudzanai is an actor, comedian and voice artist currently taking part in the Soho Theatre's prestigious Comedy Lab. She's not really on social media, which makes it quite hard to tell you where to find her. I guess you could just wish really hard? Or else Google her to find out more about her work in theatre and audiobooks and other projects, such as appearing in friend of the show Gemma Arrowsmith's Radio 4 show, Sketched Out, still available to listen to on BBC Sounds. Keep an eye out for Kudzi, because whatever she turns up in, it's guaranteed to be the tops. And while you're Googling and schmoogling around online, why not check out CrowleyTime.com and have a look at the show's merchandise? There's clothing, the soundtrack album, and stickers, any of which would make the perfect gift for a fellow Crowley maniac in the upcoming traditional present-exchanging portion of the year. 
Or maybe it would just make a nice treat for yourself. Go on, you've earned it. All profits go straight back into making the show and helping me to pay my guests and collaborators. So why not make a purchase you can be really smug about at CrowleyTime.com. The next episode will be released when someone finally kills that total bastard Count Dracula. So make sure to subscribe, so you'll be alerted at the precise moment that happens. Everything you've just heard was made by me, Tom Crowley, and featured special guest Kudzanai Chihuahua. Please submit all praise, questions, or complaints to at a Tom Crowley on social media or email crowleytimepodcast at gmail.com. To help me stockpile garlic and pointy bits of wood to finally kill that total bastard Count Dracula, go to patreon.com forward slash crowleytime and become a supporter today. Or go to crowleytime.com and buy some of this show's merchandise. And remember, though you fight to stay alive, your body starts to shiver. For no mere mortal can resist the evil of energy companies ratcheting up their prices despite drawing in record profits year after year. Consult consumer comparison services to make sure you're getting the best deal on offer. Oh, well, we've been up against it this episode, but despite it all, we've done it. Hey, Savaloy? Savaloy? Are you there? Where's my beef bourguignon? Savaloy? Strange, it seems darker here in the studio than usual. I can't even see through the glass into the booth. Hello? What? I thought I saw someone out there. Some shadowy shape moving, but... Oh, hang on. I know what this is. Am I dead and in hell? Is that what this is? I'm dead and in hell, and this is some sort of deceptively comforting hell replica of somewhere I knew in life, but after a while it's going to go all weird because actually it turns out I'm dead and in hell. Is that it? Is that what this is? Because if it is, I'm going to be really annoyed, actually. I might even write to the council, because quite frankly, I'm sick and tired of all these ironic afterlife punishments going around. It's a waste of everyone's time, and we've all got stuff to be getting on with. So just...